Call all hands. Speak to quarters. Run out the gun. Stand by this tavern battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. Lieutenant Bush, lying in hospital ashore, riddled with Spanish sword cuts from the prisoners who had risen against us. Our new captain, Buckland, under a grievous shadow for his laxity on the night of the insurrection. And many of our crewmen still recovering from wounds. It seemed for a time as though nothing would come right. Even our three Spanish prize ships, bagged in Haiti, served but little to lift the spirits of our ship's company. And then, one sunny morning... To add to our confusion, we had our first notice of an important change impending. Mr. Hornblower, sir, is Captain Buckland still ashore? Yes, Mr. James. The boats come alongside, sir, from shore. What boats? Uniform of Captain's rank aboard. Oh. <clears throat> well, very well, Midshipman James. No need for undue excitement, is there? Order up the boatswain's mates at once, if you please, and side boys and marine guard, too. Don't forget We'll pipe him aboard with all due honors. Uh, yes, sir. I I'll call him at once. Persons made top side and lively. Lieutenant, all blow over your pipe. The shore boat fastened alongside, and sure enough, through the entry port emerged the captain, his gold lace flaming in the tropic sunshine. I touched my hat respectfully. You are at present the senior lieutenant on board this ship? Yes, sir. Lieutenant Horatio Hornblower, at your service, sir. My name is Cogshill. Yes. And here I have a paper I'm required to read to you. Orders from Sir Richard Lambert, Vice Admiral of the Blue, Knight of the Bath, commanding His Majesty's ships and vessels on the Jamaica station, to Captain James Edward Cogshill of His Majesty's ship Buckler. You are hereby requested and required to repair immediately on board His Majesty's ship Renown now lying in Port Royal Bay, and to take command pro tempore of the aforesaid ship Renown. Well, Mr. Hornblower, now you know. Um, uh, yes, yes, sir. As you must be well aware, no orders I might give aboard this ship would be legal unless I had read aloud my authority. Yes, sir. So it goes from the King's Navy. So it goes. Um, yes. Um, well, welcome aboard, sir. We're only a, well, a little surprised, I suppose... But you see, sir, none of us had heard yes. that you... Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. Well, sir, it's only that... Well, Lieutenant Buckland had succeeded our deceased Captain Sawyer some weeks ago, and so he was now uh, Captain Buckland, naturally. And, and Naturally. Uh, well, would you have any idea, sir, what they might uh, have in mind for him? Not an idea in the world, Lieutenant Hornblower. Oh. Oh, he may revert to his first lieutenancy here on the Renown, of course. I couldn't be sure. Yes, sir. Well, then there is Lieutenant Bush, who's lying in hospital ashore. Mr. Bush had succeeded him, Captain Buckland, you see, and 
I'm only temporarily replacing Bush. Yeah. Well, you have been a bit disorganized, eh? Yes, sir. There's always confusion at times like these. We'll see. We'll see. Things will be straightened out, I'm sure. But I couldn't possibly guess, Hornblower, what Sir Richard might have in mind. No, sir. <clears throat> yes, well, I do have one interesting piece of news, however. The Admiral is taking the first of your prize ships into the Royal Navy. Sir? Uh, what's her name? The, uh, uh, the Gaditana, sir. She, she's the largest one. Uh, the Gaditana, yes, yes that's it. Uh, Captured from the Spaniards at Samana, eh? Yes, sir, I was aboard of her, sir, when our prisoners revolted. Well, Sir Richard likes her looks, it seems. He's renaming her the Retribution. Retribution? So someone will have to be promoted to command her. Oh, well, as I say, we'll see. Things will be straightened out in their own time. It's the Navy way. That afternoon, I had my first opportunity to go ashore. I made my way at once to Kingston Naval Hospital, where Bush still lay abed nursing his wounds. I knew he'd be thirsting for news of us, and now I had something to tell him. It is good of you to come. I tried to ever since we sent you ashore in that stretcher. This is the first chance I've had to leave the Renown. You, well, you can guess how busy I've been. Well, can't I just? I, I've been following everything you've had to do with my mind's eye. Completing Renown again with powder and shot, food and water. Yes, Cleaning up after the prisoners. Getting rid of the traces of that cursed battle on deck. Hmm. I'm surprised you look so healthy, old lad. What's in that basket? Oh, well, pawpaws, mangoes, and a pineapple. Do you know that's the only the second pineapple I've ever seen in my life? Oh, thank you. It's very kind of you. You know, I, I owe you thanks for much more than... Oh, just... Bush, I say, we, we, we've got a new captain. What? Cogshill, transferred from the Buckler. Came aboard this morning, read himself in with a uh-huh. flourish. <laughs> no wonder. Promotion to a ship of the line from a 28-gun frigate. Well, oh, quite a step. Oh, poor Buckler, man. I don't suppose he'll ever live down being taken by those prisoners asleep in his bed. Yes, I'm afraid he can't look for promotion. They may not even discipline him in, in any obvious way, I mean, but... Mm. Well, he'd, you know, he'll just simply be passed over the rest of his Navy life. You know, I, I've been thinking lying here, it, it really doesn't seem quite fair. It, it was only my good luck I wakened up in time the night of the rising. Mm, you've got plenty of sword guts. Call it good luck if you like. You fought till you fell unconscious. Oh, Buckland would have done the same had the opportunity been granted. Oh, yes, and probably. Well, Bush, I've been long enough in the service to think that fortune's more capricious here than in other walks of life. Don't you agree? Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, I've got another piece of news. Oh, good. I, I, I'm glad of any gossip in this place. Yes, our, our prize, the Gaditana, is being commissioned into the Navy. No, is she mm-hmm. by George? Yes, 18 guns, six pounders and nines. She rate as a sloop of war, and she's to be renamed the Retribution. Oh, so the Admiral will have to promote a commander for her. Uh-huh. Nice berth for somebody, eh? Yes. Well, it, it might have been Buckland, if only... Well, it still might be, of course, if they don't give much weight to his being caught napping. As our brand-new captain is fond of remarking, I wouldn't attempt to guess. <laughs> of course, they can always... Hello. Who's this? Come in. Well, 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 Mr. Bush. And how are we feeling, eh? <laughs> oh, we have company. Uh, Hornblower, this is Surgeon Sankey, head of the hospital. Yes. I'm happy to meet you, sir. Oh, I, I heard of uh, Lieutenant Hornblower. Not from Mr. Bush alone. <laughs> Delighted to see you, Mr. Hornblower. Thank you, sir. You made quite a name for yourself, I gather, during that high tea campaign. I don't know about that. Our patient here, George. Oh, right. Now, wait a minute, Doctor. That doesn't look so worried, Mr. Bush. <laughs> we shan't embarrass Mr. Hornblower. <laughs> well, sir, I bring news that's bound to interest you. Oh? I've just received a visit from an admiralty aide. It seems the girl braid of the station awaits your recovery with impatience, Mr. Bush. A court of inquiry is to be convened. A court of inquiry? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> of course, man. What did you expect? And it's only a court of inquiry. After all, uh, it's not a court of martial law. <laughs> Anyone? I think they want to sift the fact of some of the doings aboard your ship. I thought by now they might have changed their minds. Ah, then it's news to you too, is it, Mr. Hornblower? Well, um, yes, in a way. After all, some strange things did transpire. Uh, am I not right? At least that's what um, station rumor indicates. Your Spanish prisoners rising in the middle of the night, taking the ship against almost no resistance, would have taken it, I've been told, had it not been for the fortunate advent of the 
Hornblower here. Yeah. Station scuttlebutt is never very reliable. Dr. I do like Mr. Bush. I, I was pressed to declare when you might be ready to make an appearance. So now, uh, <laughs> let's have a look at you, hey? Oh. Then I will send word to the Admiral. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, but I promised, I promised, Mr. Bush. Oh, good Lord. You're a fortunate man, you know. These are all insight wounds. Let me just pull back the sheet a little further. Yes, yes, it's contrary to all my professional experience. Usually the Spanish can be relied on to use their knives far more effectively. <laughs> Mr. Holder. Yes, sir, sir. Just look at this cut here. Eight inches long, at least. And yet not more than two inches deep. Four inches of the point would have been better. The effort of a tire, I dread. Hmm. Remember, Mr. Hornblower, the next time you use a knife to give an upward inclination to the point. <laughs> Far more effective. I see, thank you. Mere superficial laceration in this instance. The human ribs lie open to welcome an upward thrust. Before a downward thrust, they overlap and forbid all entrance. Turn over, please. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yes. See this? Here, the descending knife again bounded in vain from one rib to the next. Oh, well, I'm glad you did. Each cut is healing very well now. No sign of mortification, Mr. Hornblower? Two days ago, I wasn't sure. Not in the least. Yes, these are most keen cuts, unfortunately. Oh, eh? Bend with me, if you please. Your honorable scars, Mr. Bush, will almost disappear <laughs> in a few years. Well, good. Yes, yes, tomorrow I shall remove the sutures. You will observe that Mr. Bush is still uh, a trifle weak. You see? I wasn't certain. He was entirely exsanguinated by his wound. Well, what does that mean? Well, drained of his blood, I mean, of course. Oh. Uh, but if the court of inquiry will but indulge him with a chair when he gives evidence... Oh, but I, I don't think I'll be ready for a while yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nonsense. You're doing splendidly. In three days' time, you'll be quite prepared to answer any questions, Mr. Bush. Oh. Uh, I'm very well, Sean. Let me see now. That will be Friday, will it not? Hmm? Friday. After all, to assemble a court on this station is not easy when every ship is absent on necessary duty so much of the time. Very happy with the progress you're making, Mr. Bush. <laughs> I shall inform the Admiral of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did I tell you the court will be convened aboard your own vessel, the Renown? Your new captain himself is named a member of the board. We'll see you get there, Mr. Bush. Well, now, continued progress to you, sir. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Hombler. Goodbye, Doctor. Oh, after all that, I do feel like a crazy quilt. One sewn by hand. Yes, Bush, I can see why. Uh, court of inquiry, eh? Oh, I hope they might forget about it. Poor Buckland. Doomed to remain an aging first lieutenant, I'm afraid. Mm. If nothing worse, if nothing worse. Well, I must get back to the ship. I hope I haven't tired you out. Oh, oh, of course you have not. You only the magpie chatter of that old gossip Sankey. <laughs> All right. It was good of you to come home, there. Oh, that was nothing. Well, see you Friday, Bush, I take it. Yes, of course. Friday. We'll both be witnesses, I suppose. I'm going to do the best I can for old Buckland. We, we may have had our disagreements, he and I, but, well... I'll right, see you Friday, Bush. Good luck. <laughs> Sergeant Sankey was right. Lieutenant Bush, though still a bit weak, was able to be about by Friday and to hobble aboard our ship, together with an impressive array of other officers, all captains, named by the Admiral to make up the board. A court of inquiry, I found, was not so awe-inspiring as a court-martial, yet it seemed formidable enough. Please uh, take a seat, Mr. Bush. I understand you're still weak from your wounds. Oh, only a little. Uh, we've uh, read the report which you addressed to Captain Buckland uh, following the attack on Samana Bay in Haiti. Uh, this report uh, is a great credit, Mr. Bush. Well, credit should be given to Lieutenant Hornblower, I think. It was his plan we used in our attack on the Spanish fortress. So oh, you were very handsome, they say, in your report, sir. I may as well state uh, here and now that in the opinion of this court... All the circumstances surrounding the attack at Samara and the uh, subsequent uh, capitulation of the enemy are in accord with the best traditions of the service. Thank you, sir. But uh, now we come to the next matter. 
the attempt of your prisoners to uh, capture the renown at sea. Uh, you were by this time acting as first lieutenant of the ship. Uh, step by step, Bush was taken through the bloody events of that recent night. The difficulty of supervising the women prisoners, the marine guard kept at the hatches night and day, the sudden unexplained outpouring in the dead of night, only a few hours before we were due at Jamaica. Careful, what you could. Naturally, I, I do recall that Lieutenant Hornblower had expressed his doubts about the women prisoners some days before. Uh, indeed. Oh, why, yes, sir. In fact, he'd been concerned about the whole situation of the prisoners, sir. On several occasions, he'd said... Poor Bush. I could have strangled him. Out of some <clears throat> mistaken sense of loyalty to me, he was destroying, one by one, Buckland's few last remaining claims to their indulgence. I made up my mind then and there to help Buckland in any way I could, even to lie, if necessary, when my turn came. And of course, uh, you were found among the dead after the rebellion was suppressed, uh, unconscious uh, from your wounds. Well, uh, yes, sir, but I... Well, well, thank you, Mr. Bush, that will be all. Uh, call uh, Lieutenant Hornblower. He's the next witness before this court. Lieutenant Hornblower? Uh, please uh, come forward, Mr. Hornblower. I'm here, sir. Buckland had already testified. I glanced across at him as I came forward before the court of inquiry. I felt anything but reassured. The man was pale and desperately unhappy, I could see it. What could I do to help his cause, I wondered. Uh, it's uh, been suggested, uh, Mr. Hornblower, that the attack on the fort at Samana Bay, as well as the hoisting up of the gun to search the bay, uh, were on your initiative. I can't think why that suggestion was made, sir. Mr. Buckland, Captain Buckland, bore the entire responsibility. Mm. Mm. Well, I uh, won't uh, press you further about that, then, Mr. Hornblow. Uh, we uh, understand, I think. Now, uh, let us hear about your recapture of the renown the other night. You were aboard the Gary Town, I'm informed. Uh, what first attracted your attention? I heard musket fire, sir, so I collected the prize crews and set out for the renown. Uh. Were you not afraid of uh, losing the prizes, uh, Mr. Homer? No, sir. Not with every sheet and halyard cut before I left. Uh, right, right. Well, uh, you seem to have thought of everything, uh, Lieutenant. Hmm. Also, uh, you seem to have made a very uh, prompt uh, counterattack on the renown. Yet, uh, for all you knew, the attempt of the prisoner to take the ship uh, might have already failed. Well, in that case, no harm was done except the disabling of the prize ship's rigging, sir. Uh, of course, I knew that Captain Buckton, provided no accident had befallen him, would have skillfully organized resistance. In fact, that he would immediately... Uh, mm, unhappily, an accident did befall him. Well, we uh, understand. Uh, tell me, uh, Mr. Hornblower, uh, how did it happen that you were transferred to the uh, Gaditana? Well, uh, it... Uh, it seemed feasible, sir, to organize a better disposition of the prize ships. We, we were only a day away from Jamaica by then. I see. And uh, is it true that you had uh, several times expressed concern as to uh, the intentions of the women prisoners? Well, no more concern than was felt, I'm sure, by Mr. I mean, Captain Buckland. Mm. Well, thank you, Mr. Hornblower. Thank you, thank you. That will be all. While it was over, the court's official findings placed no blame, recommending only that strict inquiry should still be made among the Spanish prisoners in an effort to discover who had led them in the revolt. And it was clear in every tone of voice and in every face that Buckland was to be made to suffer unofficially. It isn't fair, I tell you, Bush. It isn't fair. Not so loud, my friend. All those captains are still aboard. I don't care. They didn't... 
dare to say to his face that they found him guilty, but still they want him to pay. That's obvious in every word they said. He got If I were Buckland, I would... Oh, speak lower, will you? The court's a court. Getting yourself in trouble isn't going to help Buckland one bit. Oh, but did you see his face, Bush, when they walked past him? Hmm? Walked past him without so much as a glance. He's, he's utterly miserable. Yes, but you did everything you could. I noticed that. All right. Buckland's hopes are at an end. Can't help it. His hopes must have risen mightily after our success at Somalia, Bush. I can't help thinking of that. Well, well, with that to his credit and a temporary captain, he, he, he must have felt promotion in the air to, to command, at least, if not to permanent captain. And then to have everything snatched away. Oh, I'm blow. This isn't like you. Be realistic. Consider the man for him. Oh, there was no other outcome possible. Be honest. Isn't that the truth? Well, if it is, I don't want to admit it. Ah, uh-huh. here comes Captain Cox. Well, oh, gentlemen, a bit cooler as the sun goes down, you've noticed? Yes, Captain Cox. Uh, which is much better than the hospital. Uh, up there, the island heat closes around you like warm water in a bath. I'm mm, glad to have you aboard, Mr. Bush. Surgeon Sankey has given me good word of your progress. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll be happier when I'm released and back aboard the renowned for good. Oh, I hope you will at least remain on board to have dinner with me. Oh. I'd be delighted, sir. Mr. Hornblower, you too? Thank you, sir. Uh, and I shall hope to secure the presence of Lieutenants Buckland and Grayson. Oh, with much pleasure, sir. Good. In 15 minutes' time, then, as soon as I've seen the assembled captains for their gigs, that will be excellent. Our new captain was a courtly host. There were flowers in the great cabin now. The food was excellent. Seated next to the silent Buckland, I grasped at trivialities to keep the conversation going. And I was grateful for Captain Cogshill's loquacious appreciation of his own table. (laughs) Ah, that is a land crab salad before you gentlemen. Coconut-fed land crab. Some prefer it to dairy-fed pork, you know. Uh, Mr. Hornblower, perhaps you will serve it to those who would care for some. With pleasure, sir. And with it, a saddle of fresh lamb. <laughs> Sheep do badly in these islands, I'm told. But perhaps we should try it. Uh, Mr. Buckland, will you be kind enough to carve? With pleasure, sir. Ah, you see, gentlemen, we still have some real potatoes left. Oh. Ones are so weary of yams. Uh, Mr. Hondler, will you take wine? Oh, thank you, sir, yes. And you other gentlemen, Mr. Grayson? Thank you. Yes. Oh, excellent, excellent. Conviviality is most needful on occasions such as this. Uh, Mr. Bush, to your speedy recovery, sir. Oh, thank you, Captain. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Oh, how good that tastes. Careful, Bush, didn't the doctors warn you about overindulgence? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember a word of it tonight, I assure you, Holmes. Now, contemplate this steaming dish which has just been laid before us. Any of you gentlemen who have served on this station before will recognize it, I think. Hmm? <laughs> A West Indian pepper pot. <laughs> Mr. Hornblower, will you make your first essay? Come in. Well? I- I'm sent by the Admiral, sir. Oh, I should have known, of course, Miss Shipman. I fear on no other staff would you look quite so smartly turned out. <laughs> What's the message? Uh, the Admiral's compliment, sir, and he'd like Mr. Hornblower's presence on board the flagship as soon as it is convenient. Flagship, eh? Oh, and dinner not halfway finished. Oh, this is too bad. I'd better go, sir, if I may. May I have a boat, sir? Uh, pardon me, sir. The Admiral said the boat which brought me should convey to the flagship. Well, well, that settles it. We'll save some of this pepper pot for you against your return. We'll have the brandy out by that time, too, eh? <laughs> yes, but you'd better go, Mr. Hornblower. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, what in the world do you suppose the Admiral can want with Hornblower, eh? <laughs> I was gone nearly an hour. When I returned, I saw at once that the wine had been passed very generously, followed by Dutch and Swedish liqueurs, and together with brandy smuggled from France. Bush sat in a suddenly happy glow. And there was a strained look on Buckland's white face as he peered at me in the doorway. Well, there you are at last, Mr. Hornblower. Come in, man. Come in, come in. Here, sit down. It's so it's the just beginning. Now, Mr. Bush. It's your turn, Mr. Bush. The victorious war. Oceans of gore, <laughs> prizes galore, <laughs> a beauty assured. <laughs> well, excellent, Mr. Bush. <laughs> Drink fair, Mr. Hornblower. 
thank you, sir. We have a start of you already. And a stern chase is a long chase. Mm. <laughs> uh, Mr. Buckland? Uh, well, uh, jollity and... Uh, jollity and... <laughs> mirth, sir. Uh, jollity and <laughs> mirth, eh? <laughs> well, done. <clears throat> uh, you, you've come back from the Admiral, oh. Mr. Hornblower. Yes, sir. And, uh, he's all well? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so, sir. Um, he, he's made me commander of the retribution, sir. Oh, oh my, my God! I bless my soul! The retribution, your own prize. Oh, then that is our newest toast, gentlemen. Thanks. To the new commander. Yes. With a cheer! Oh, 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 I'm, I'm so glad, Hornblower. It's, it's simply Wonderful. Why, I... I, I... Mr. Buckland, you... Curse you. Curse you, Hornblower. Now, Mr. Buckland, haven't I endured enough today without this two years in the service? Working, slaving. Do you know what that's like? You with your easy successes, your... Mr. Buckland, I must command you to be silent. (sighs) Now, gentlemen... (laughs) Yeah, we shall forget this little episode, eh? And continue with our pleasantries as before. Yeah, yeah, fill the glass here. Yeah, a brimmer there, Mr. Yeah, Buckland. Yeah. Now, our country, yeah. noble England, queen of the wave. Yeah. And may pony grow ponier than oh, ever. Come along, Bush, old boy. Just one more foot and that another does it. You're perfectly all right. Of course I'm perfectly all right. Of course I am. Of course we're going, Horatio. Well, we can't send you back to hospital tonight. We must, you'll have to sleep in your own little bed aboard. I'll take you there. Good old Horatio. Best of men, that buckle Gratitude of the human animal. No. See, from the tribe to protect Never him. mind. Indeed, yeah. Never mind it now, Bush. Never oh. mind it. We'll get you into your bed and we'll talk it all over later. Anyhow, you're the new commander of the retribution, aren't you? That's I'm right. Glad I'm glad to rest you. Oh, but I shall miss you. Oh, but that I shall. And that was how I came to leave the old renown. With certain regrets, but with high hopes for my new promotion. For days, I was frantically making the prize ship ready for sea under her new colors, organizing the scratch crew who had drafted into her. And then, it seemed too quickly, one gray dawn, we were ready to sail. I was touched to find Bush on hand. He'd followed Captain Cogsfield's gig and had come across to where my ship lay. Bush, is it really you? It's still so dark I can hardly see you. Oh, it's me all right, sir. That is, it's I. Oh, good to see you. Oh, I'd have been over before, but as you know, we're just back from a practice cruise in the river. Yeah, I know. Lambert couldn't have made a better choice. Oh, I already told you that, haven't I? But with you as commander, all seems right. After all, a, a fighting navy needs to fight, and, and needs fighting men to lead it when she does. With the bound, sir. Well, seems funny calling you, sir, for a change. Uh, well, we're bound for England. No. Oh, I'll be back again. A convoy to the Downs, dispatches for the commissioners... Pick up the replies and convoy out again. You, you'll get your commission confirmed, sir, while you're there. I hope so. That is, if they don't make peace with Bonaparte. <laughs> peace? Not very likely. Matter of fact, you you may run into the French on your way across the Atlantic. Yes, sir, I may. A little lighter now. I must be getting back. You'll sail with the land breeze, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Keep out around the points and then we've gone. Have I told you, I, I admire the way that new epaulette sits your shoulder. Oh. Well, Thanks. Well, I, I'll miss you, Bush. Quite a night we had together here in Kingston when, mm. when the prize money from Samana was paid out. Mm. Less, less said about that, the better now, possibly. <laughs> At least it didn't send you back to hospital. Are you ready to up anchor, may I ask, sir? Yes, up anchor, Coxon. I'll be on the quarterdeck in just a moment. Well, good luck, sir. Good luck, Bush. Until we meet again. This life in the service means... Many partings. I'd proud to have known you. Don't forget that, will you? I'll just see you down to the entry port. No, Bush, I shan't forget. Same goes for me. Here, shake hands. 
Goodbye. And happy sailings wherever they take you. Goodbye, Bush. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.